Salutations, lads and lasses. Here we are. So soon, yet, some would argue, too soon? Halo 3's flight has concluded, and man, did we have a whole slew of content to test and play with and experience. After two flight extensions, yes, two, and invitations being sent out to every insider, it seems that this flight has set Halo 3 up to be the greatest MCC on PC launch thus far. I would argue that this flight had the most appealing content that kept me personally hooked the longest. I think, apart from the content available in the flight itself, the most important takeaway was the overall performance of the game. Before I even think of discussing what was available during this flight, I want to stress, and I am going to stress this multiple times throughout the video, the Halo 3 on PC played leagues better than Halo 2 Classic did during its Halo 2 PC flight like last month or whenever that was. I am talking about smooth unlocked frame rate, the hit registration feeling solid, and overall game performance feeling more stable for the most part. I can say that I am extremely excited to see how the retail release of Halo 3 on PC goes, and if it is anything like this flight, it'll definitely be the bounce back that 343 Industries needed to restore faith in those whose faith in them is waning or was waning, because let's be real, you know, their track record's a little, a little shoddy, you know, but that's not new news. Anyways. In this flight overview, I will be discussing and showcasing the available campaign offerings from the flight, Halo 3's new and improved Forge mode, Halo 3's theater mode, and of course, everyone's favorite, Halo 3's multiplayer. I will also be talking about the new challenge hub, Halo 3's improved customization, and any other small UI or game changes and tweaks I feel impacts MCC on PC overall. And of course, we will end it all on a recap and my final opinions and feelings about what I experienced. And I'm also going to preface this by saying that I referenced the season system that's available in the MCC as a battle pass system, because that's how I describe it to people who don't play MCC. I'm like, you play Call of Duty, right? Yeah, it's like the battle pass, except you don't have to pay for it. So, when I reference battle pass in this video, I mean the MCC season unlock system. So, that being said, we have a lot of exciting content to talk about, so I say we go ahead and jump right into it, shall we? First off, let us talk about something that I personally love playing, and that is the campaign. So, campaign. I mentioned in my Ruby's Rebalanced video, which, if you haven't checked that out, I suggest you do because that mod is amazing. Halo 3's campaign is in my top 3 favorite Halo campaigns of all the games released thus far. You could imagine that I was very excited to replay the available offerings on PC with unlocked frame rate, a centered crosshair, and a 100 plus FOV. I say 100 plus because I started off at 100 and eventually decided, eh, screw it, I'm gonna move to 120 FOV. But that was towards the end of the flight. The missions available on offer were Sierra 117, The Storm, which is one of my favorite levels of all time, The Ark, The Covenant, another one of my favorite levels of all time, and the final mission, Halo, which all offer different experiences and locations to really test Halo 3's PC capabilities. It's a good mix of like vehicle, infantry, different environments and all that. They really allow you to test and push Halo 3 to its capa you know, capabilities. The missions themselves were all as fun as they were on Xbox One and Xbox 360. It's nothing new, but it is still fun to experience on yet another platform. The performance is where Halo 3 on PC really shines. I mentioned that the game ran with a smooth, unlocked frame rate, and this was true for the campaign for sure. All of the easter eggs, glitches, exploits, and everything I came to love within Halo 3's campaign are all available in stunning 4K with an unlocked frame rate. 
Mouse performance on PC is on par with what you would expect and feels exceptionally smooth and accurate. No issues there at all, not like Halo 2. There really is not much to mention about the campaign, as the flight and PC port of Halo 3 essentially just makes the campaign play better and more smoothly, you know? The campaign challenges, which I will discuss in greater detail later in this overview, rewards players with experience and even unlock tokens or whatever they are called for accomplishing simple or not so simple feats during the campaign. This can include using power weapons, killing heavy infantry, vehicle kills, etc. As you progress through a challenge during gameplay, you will get a small little box that pops up on the right side of the screen showing your progress towards a specific challenge. This mirrors Halo 3 ODST's achievement tracking, a feature I wish was implemented more often in games in general, not just Halo. Overall, Halo 3's campaign was more the same. And this is not a bad thing at all, and with the improved performance, I feel it breathes new life into the game's campaign, much like its port to the Xbox One through the original MCC did. The campaign is fun, it plays well, and was an overall joy to test. I love playing Halo campaigns, I love testing them on PC, I love it all. Which is a mostly recurring theme in this overview, so... Let us talk about the segment of this flight that actually excited me the most, Halo 3's new and improved Forge Mode. I personally did not really get into using Halo's Forge Mode until a little after Halo Reach launched. However, I do very vividly remember Halo 3's Forge being very bare bones and finicky to get the hang of back in the day. I even went back and was forging a bunch of maps for the Forge Map Showcase series I started when this channel first began. I would create maps on every Halo game that had a Forge mode, and Halo 3's Forge felt more dated than ever when compared to Halo 2 Anniversary, Halo Reach, and especially Halo 5. However, 343 Industries took note of how lackluster to say Halo 3's Forge was and decided to give it a modern upgrade, a facelift, so to speak. Halo 3's Forge mode has been almost completely overhauled to be more on par with the newer iterations in the series. This includes increasing the budget on each map so more can be created, adding a variety of new objects to each map including new vehicles like the AA Wraith, Troop Hog, and even a partially destroyed Warhog with a working turret. All of that is cool and fine and dandy and whatever, but what really helps improve Halo 3's Forge by leaps and strides is the addition of a new physics system for items in Forge Mode. Now, just like every Forge Mode to be released since Halo 3, you can change how items behave on the map through three physics presets. You can pick from normal, which is where items behave like they do in OG Halo 3 Forge. This means items will fall if placed off the ground in the air, can be pushed around by players, etc. Then you have fixed, which is where the items can collide with other items in the world, but they cannot be moved by players or vehicles when they're collided with. Imagine it like the item weighs a fuck ton and will not budge when collided with. Finally, the physics preset I use the most is phased. This means items do not have collision with other items or the world when placing them on the world, so you can literally phase them through objects or the world itself. However, these items still do have collision with items placed on them, and players themselves of course. They do not just fall through the map and disappear once placed, but can essentially be placed anywhere regardless of if another object is in the way, or if the world, you know, ends technically. This new, but not so new, physics system makes forging elaborate scenes and other creations way easier. No longer do we have to use teleporter glitches to make items behave like a fixed or phased item would. 
This was the change that once I figured out about its existence, I was extremely excited to try out, and boy, does it live up to what we expect from a Forge mode in 2020. These new changes to Halo 3's Forge mode not only modernize the mode, but also make it easier for players or Forgers to jump in and create whatever their heart desires. It also streamlines the experience between games as now pretty much every Halo game's Forge mode has the same basic system and tools. So jumping between, say, Halo 3's new Forge mode and Halo 2 Anniversary's Forge mode is not quite as jarring and does not require much relearning of each game's specific quirks and whatnot. I mean, Halo 5 still has quite a learning curve, but that is a whole new level of Forge that no other Halo game lives up to thus far. Overall, I really enjoyed tinkering around with Halo 3's improved and modernized Forge mode. With new vehicles, a bigger budget, and a more streamlined physics system, I can safely say that Halo 3's Forge no longer feels quite as dated and quirky. Earlier in the flight, I uploaded a speed build of my first ever showcased map, Disequilibrium. I did this to kind of show off how the new physics system makes building complex, even though my map is not that complex, maps way easier. And because I wanted to see the difference between recording with theater mode and a live gameplay. I also wanted to use something other than multiplayer gameplay as a background footage of a video. You know, to kind of shake things up. Speaking of theater mode, which has been quite a lifesaver during this flight, why don't we talk about it? Because it's kind of a big thing. Theater mode. Theater mode is a tool that pretty much everyone uses in some way or another. Whether it be for angles and transitions, for montages, recording machinimas, or just to record a good match that you did not record live while playing. Halo 3 was the first introduction to theater mode in the Halo franchise. It is a simple tool that is incredibly useful. And that's about it. Much like Halo 2 Anniversary's theater mode, it works and that is what matters. The theater synchronization to live footage is on par with what we expect, much like Halo 2 Anniversary's theater was. Thankfully, Halo 3's PC theater is nothing like Halo 5's god-awful theater mode, don't even get me started on that. When I mention theater synchronization, I am talking about how like alike theater footage looks compared to live gameplay. Like does the movement, aiming, shot registration, etc. look accurate to live gameplay? Which it does in Halo 3's case, so that's wonderful. The controls for theater are the same as they are for Halo 2 Anniversary by default, which means they will feel natural and seamless and will be easy to get the hang of, especially if you've been using Halo 2 Anniversary's theater on PC since it launched. That is pretty much all that needs to be said about Halo 3's theater. It works and it feels great! It will be a great addition to MCC on PC as it was for Xbox 360 and MCC on the Xbox One. So, what do most people use theater for? Hmm... Well, they usually use theater to record multiplayer footage in one way or another, just like I stated at the beginning of this segment. Now, I feel it's time we talk about that very subject. The one everyone seems to care the most about. Halo 3 on PC's glorious multiplayer. Now, here we are. The segment of this video where I talk about most people's favorite aspect of Halo 3. The one that harbors the most memories and time played for a majority of Halo 3 players. Like, don't lie, you know where we're at right now. But, man, does Halo 3's multiplayer feel so... It feels so great. It feels good. I can tell you definitively, yes, definitively, the Halo 3's multiplayer experience during this flight was by far more polished, complete, and overall more enjoyable than what we got with Halo 2 Classic during its PC flight. Ooh, uh, I don't really want to think about that now that I've experienced this. In Halo 2 Anniversary and Classic, 
A lot of people said they can feel a distinct difference when fighting against a controller and mouse and keyboard player. People were essentially saying, as they have been since Halo Reach dropped on PC if we're being honest, that controller has a distinct advantage, I put that in air quotes, distinct advantage in gunfights because the aforementioned Halo games, you know, Halo CE, Halo Reach, and Halo 2, um, their aim assist was really strong. However, I will say that while I could kind of tell in the Halo games ported so far that controller players had it a bit easier, I really could not for Halo 3. Now, before you go after me saying, hey, you know what, you're an idiot, there's no difference, blah blah blah, or you say, hey, you're an idiot, it's obviously way overpowered to use a controller, I'm not picking a side, I'm just, you know, going over Halo 3. That being said, I know that controller players have been playing controller for years, so they have years and years of experience and muscle memory and all that built up, and... For mouse and keyboard, that's a relatively new, um, I guess, input device to the mainstream audience. Which I am not necessarily part of because I've been playing Halo on PC for over a decade. Project Cartographer, Halo Online, Halo CE, Halo Custom Edition, let's go! Represent OG PC community. Anyways, enough of that. I thought I would mention that there is a small to noticeable... You know, that's the scale, small to noticeable advantage for controller players, depending on the title you are playing. It is there, okay? I'm not going to say it's not, but it is not quite as broken as some people would like to claim. Some people are just bad at mouse and keyboard, and they think they have this, like, you know, I deserve to be good at mouse and keyboard because I've been playing Halo for so many years. No, bro, you got to, like, get used to it. It's a different game. It's on PC. And I really shouldn't have to be saying that. You know, so far into MCC being on PC, you know, we're already got Halo Reach, Halo CE, and Halo 2 under the belt. People should start be getting to the point where they can pretty consistently, you know, if they are actually better than controller players, they should be able to pretty consistently beat them. But I know this is a controversy that's going to exist until, you know, the end of time when it comes to multiple inputs on PC gaming. But that little tangent aside, I did not really notice, you know, a, a distinct difference for Halo 3 during this fight. Halo 3's controller versus mouse and keyboard balance seems to be more well-tuned compared to previously ported games. So overall, the multiplayer experience felt more balanced and consistent. This is something that I was surprised, and while I somewhat subconsciously knew it felt more balanced and consistent, it did not click in my mind until I was talking to some people on Discord and they brought it up. So that is great and it really makes the game feel much more enjoyable. And before I move on, I know like, I keep saying this, but I just want everyone to understand that I know controller has advantages and I know that, you know, a lot of people will blame that. I'm not picking a side. I'm just saying that it didn't feel as bad in Halo 3. So don't come at me with that shit because I ain't even gonna, I ain't even gonna tolerate it. The unlocked frame rate, for the most part, works flawlessly and allows you to experience Halo 3 in that 60 plus FPS glory. In my case, I played on my 144Hz, like 2K, 1440p monitor, and man, did it feel as smooth as butter. The hit registration, at least in my experience, felt accurate and solid. You know, a far cry from Halo 2 Classic's rough hit registration during its flight and initial launch. During the second flight build, or the updated flight build, the Xbox 360 version of Halo 3's audio was restored. If you do not know, I'm sure you can just search any comparison video between Halo 3 on MCC and on Xbox 360 and see that the audio is in fact not the same. Halo 3 on Xbox 360's audio was much beefier and sounded quite a bit better in my opinion than the quieter, less bassy, like awkwardly pitched MCC audio. That is a pretty limited description of the difference between MCC and 360 audio, but it still highlights the point I'm trying to make. Xbox 360 audio being restored is a net positive. Let's go. The mouse movement and overall fluidity of the looking mechanics felt so smooth and seamless. It did not feel jarring or jagged or like there was some forced acceleration or anything like that. 
I noticed how fluid the mouse looking mechanics and the movement and everything felt within my first few minutes of playtime and just from that moment on I was like alright this is already shaping up to be a good a good build a good port but I digress the playlist offerings were pretty robust and really tested a good variety of the multiplayer offerings that are available in retail MCC however one thing I did kind of wish for was more BTB maps during their specific play days of the flight. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love Valhalla and Last Resort as much as the next guy, but come on. There, there has to be more BTB maps, am I right? Like, what's the definition of insanity, am I right? Anyways, Halo 3 on PC is on track to be the greatest MCC on PC launch title thus far. There is so much refinement and pre-polish, you know, I got air quotes going over that too. And 343 has not even pushed the game into that final polishing or refinement stage yet. As I mentioned in my second flight extension video, these extensions, patches, and fixes that have been tested help fuel my belief that 343 Industries is doing everything they can to ensure that Halo 3's PC launch is damn near flawless. And with the game feeling as refined as it is prior to entering the aforementioned final polishing stage, I think it is safe to say we are on the right track. The multiplayer experience of this Halo 3 flight felt far more refined than any prior MCC on PC flight at all. It really shows how far this game has come and that 343 Industries really understands how important this launch is for the future relationship between themselves and the community and us. So as we all know, a new challenge system was tested during the Halo 2 Anniversary PC flight and I honestly don't think or I'm not sure if it was even implemented into the retail build when Halo 2 on, it, um, on PC launched, but there was not sort of any challenge menu or in-game notification system. Well, there was the one that popped up at the end of the mission to help us track our challenge progress during its test run in Halo 2 Anniversary's flight. So it was very bare bones, so to speak. Now, with this Halo 3 flight, we got the ability to test a new challenge hub and multiple iterations of an in-game notification system. So, why don't I divulge this new system in all of its glory? So, before I even get started, I know it is sort of strange that I'm going into so much detail on this small portion of the flight, and this segment might actually be longer than the multiplayer segment, I don't really know, but... It is a system that has much more value than simply being able to track challenges. As I mentioned in the beginning of this overview, the challenges that were available during the flight were not only tied to multiplayer, but they were also tied to the campaign and firefight even though it was not available during this flight. This ultimately gives the campaigns of the MCC value in terms of progression through the battle pass system and rank progression rather than just for personal enjoyment or achievement hunting. You can obtain experience and unlock tokens through playing the campaign, which is something that the community has been asking for since this new season battle pass system was introduced. The initial iteration of the in-game notifications were large and contained not only the challenge name and your progress. After enough complaints by insiders that this uh, notification box was kind of intrusive, a new, more streamlined in-game notification was introduced. And I feel this new notification, which contains only the name of the challenge and your progress, is much less intrusive and more refined. They also added a audio bit that plays when a challenge is completed. Which is a nice touch, you know, more feedback. The multiplayer challenges revolved around things like using headshot weapons, starter weapons, power weapons, achieving multi-kills, winning matches, completing matches, you know, all sorts of things like that. This incentivizes players to aim to play in a potentially different style than they usually play in, or to try and get kills with different weapons than they normally would, or to get in vehicles if they don't get in vehicles. Like, I don't really get in vehicles all too much in Halo, but you know, I'm like, yeah, screw it, you know, it's a challenge. I don't normally drive Warthogs because I like to get kills, I'm a kill fiend, but 
You know what? Screw it. Let's do it. I'm trying to run someone over. I feel that the dynamic of multiplayer will not change that much. The meta is still going to remain the same. But it will definitely give players something to do differently in multiplayer matches rather than just play the exact same way every single game. Monotonous repetitiveness. Some people enjoy that, but I like to change it up every now and then or I get bored of a game real fast. Overall, I think this new challenge system really gives players the incentive to try out every aspect of the MCC regardless of why they bought it in the first place. I mean, you know there are people out there that may have bought the MCC for only the campaign, or only the multiplayer. But now they have in-game incentives to try different aspects of the game with rewards of unlocked tokens and experience. Also, some of the challenges are tied to a specific title. So let's say you're buying MCC on PC only for Halo 3 and you don't even install the other games. Well, with challenges that are themed to those games, it might incentivize you to maybe install those games and give them a try. Who knows, you might actually end up enjoying them more than Halo 3. I mean, I'm not saying you will definitively, but you know, I'm just trying to give an example. Overall, I really enjoyed going after these challenges while playing, and while I did not complete near as many as I thought I would, it was still fun and will give players something to do while they play. So that's that's the challenge system. That's pretty much all I got to say about it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and highlight some of the other changes, tweaks, other stuff like that, and then we're gonna wrap it up with my final conclusion. So let's go. In the wake of some of the larger changes or improvements that Halo 3's PC flight has received and implemented. There are also quite a few smaller ones that I thought I would highlight in this little overview we got going on here. A lot of these changes and tweaks came about when the second flight build was dropped right before the second flight extension. These tweaks were in response to player complaints and opinions that came up during the flight itself and were tested alongside other fixes in the second flight build, the updated flight build. Firstly, after the second flight build was released, a small but intriguing change was made to the battle pass system, apart from the challenges I mentioned prior. This change was the ability to unlock items in the battle pass in whatever order you choose, on a per page basis of course. I remember grinding to tier 100 during season 1 and slogging through all the stuff I didn't care about to get to the one or two items per page that I actually cared for. I'm assuming you're still going to have to complete the entire page before you can move on to the next. I mean, that's pretty much common sense. But at least you will be able to get what you want early on in the grind of that specific page. Another small change involves the placement of the first person weapon models on the player's screen. For some weapons, the weapons themselves are positioned lower on the screen to allow you to actually see more of what's in front of you. I'm not going to complain about more visibility, I mean that's ridiculous. I believe this change came from people complaining about how intrusive the weapon models were in the first flight build when centered crosshair was enabled. The weapons were positioned much higher on the screen and almost completely blocked the entire right portion of your line of sight. Lastly, I want to mention the new Halo 3 skull that was added when the second flight build dropped. The name of the skull is Acrophobia, and the description simply reads, Unlocked in celebration of the launch of Halo 3 on PC. Since this skull is a non-scoring skull with a multiplier of zero, I am assuming it's going to be one of those meme fun skulls. Acrophobia is defined as a fear of heights, so theories are circulating that it increases players' jump height or something along those lines. Whatever it may be, I am excited to see what it is and what it allows us to do while playing the campaign. Well, we have gone over quite a bit of new stuff that was tested during this double extended flight. So what about what I think? What about my opinions about what I experienced during this flight? Well, I'm going to go ahead and dump all that on you now. So get ready because here comes the plane. I just want to preface this section with my usual disclaimer. 
that I did not go over every little thing about this flight, every little change, every little known bug. You know, this isn't a complete and total breakdown. This is just a general overview. I really just went over some major stuff and the things that interested me the most, as I normally do. With that being said, let us talk about my opinions on this flight itself. So, it is safe to say that Halo 3's flight has been well received. I mean, if you look at the content produced by almost any other Halo content creator, you'll see nothing but praise for the most part. And, uh, <laughs> I am no different. I mentioned in the very beginning of this overview, and I will mention it again. This overview should be subtitled, The Broken Record Overview. The state of Halo 3 during this flight, and, you know, potentially the only flight for Halo 3, was by far more refined and polished than Halo 2 Classic's PC flight, or Halo 2 Anniversary's PC flight. Sure, there are still quite a bit of issues, most of them visual, auditory, or like UI related, but overall, it is the most near-perfect flight build we have played for any of the games ported to PC so far, and that's saying a lot. During the span of this Halo 3 PC flight, we experienced two flight builds that were different in more ways than any other pair of flight builds that were tested during any other game's flight. Most of the gameplay related issues that were reported by players or were known during the first flight build run were fixed and those fixes were tested during the second flight build. Which is a process that unfortunately usually occurs during the final polishing of a game pre-launch. This is why the launch of previous MCC on PC titles, specifically Halo 2 and Halo 1, but for some reason that affected Halo 3 more than did Halo 1, but I've already talked about that. Um, they were rough, to say the least. They did not have the time or manpower, I assume, to properly test these fixes for the major issues in that roughly two week span between when the final flight ends and the game launches. I mean, we got to test fixes for the major issues during this flight, and now that the major issues we tested um, fixes for are solved, all that is left for 343 Industries to do, apart from final polishing, is fix the smaller UI, visual, auditory, and miscellaneous bugs that are left over and were found during the second flight build's run. In terms of things I would like to be added or changed, I would like to see more variety in map selection during matchmaking, or maybe eventually in the future, like the ability to select maps in the composer that I do not want to play at all. Imagine that you really hate a map, and you have the option to ensure you never play it. Or maybe you play too much of it and you want to break from it. I know that's how I get sometimes. I also know that that would be hard to implement or make it difficult for some players to find matches, but choice is always good to me. Another thing would be bringing back the veto system. I mean, unsung hero, the veto system. <laughs> I mean, it should just be map vetoing. Because whenever it was a game, like a specific title veto system, like in the original launch of MCC, you would basically just get funneled down to, to one specific game or game mode. So I think it should just go back to being a map veto system. Like let's say you're queued up for Halo 2, Halo 3, and Halo Reach. And you get Halo 3. So you're going to play Halo 3 for sure. But you have the choice between different map and game mode options within Halo 3. It's not like I'm voting between Halo Reach, Halo 3, and Halo 2. I think that kind of veto system would probably make it a little better, but I don't really know how that would mesh with the match composer, but that's just something that I think would be cool. I believe the Halo 3 on PC's retail launch, based on what I experienced during this flight, is going to be the most refined and polished launch so far, and I hope I'm not putting my foot in my mouth by saying that. I mean, we are getting a ton of new content in the way of Halo 3's improved Forge, its multiplayer, its campaign, the theater mode, a revamped like season system or battle pass system, and by revamped I mean you can just unlock stuff in whatever order you want per page, a new challenge system, and other various changes and fixes and all that good stuff. Not to mention Season 2 is probably going to come out around the time Halo 3 launches, so that's more content. The flight played near flawlessly, and most of the UI, visual, and auditory bugs that were present either were not a big deal to me, 
or I didn't even notice them at all, to be honest. This has by far been the most fun flight of the entire flighting program, which I remind you, I've been a part of this flighting program ever since the first ever MCC flight back in 2018. So that is saying something about how enjoyable this was to partake in. I am, dare I say, overly excited to play Halo 3 on PC in the retail build of MCC and make new memories on the game that most of my multiplayer memories from a long time ago were made. Overall, I think with Halo 3's improvements, Halo 3's incredible PC performance, and overall, which is a result of 343 Industries' dedication to ensuring a smooth and near flawless launch, we have a lot to look forward to and should be optimistic about what's to come. Sure, we can all still keep our reservations. I mean, 343 Industries is coming off the back of that Halo 2 anniversary launch, but I feel with how this flight was handled and the overall experience that they will not make the same mistake again. I sure hope I am right in saying that and not putting my foot in my mouth like I said, but that's that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and please do leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you did enjoy it. As you probably know, there is an issue going around on this platform with fake or stolen YouTube accounts commenting on videos and spamming and nonsense like that. If you do leave a comment, I would like to ask that you word it in a way that ensures you are you know, not a bot, you do not look like one of the bots. Because I'm going to either be deleting or ignoring comments that are kind of sus looking. Because apparently these stolen accounts can use comment interaction as a way to hijack your account. I mean, I recently watched a Some Ordinary Gamers video on the subject and now I'm paranoid about any sus looking interactions on my channel. I don't know if it's still a big deal now because I think you posted that video a couple weeks ago. I'm not certain, but uh, I just thought I'd throw that out there. So if you want to interact with me and if you're not a scammer or someone trying to steal my account, by all means, I love interacting with the community. Just make yourself known you know that you're not a bot anyways with all that being said i will catch you all in the next video peace